Yeah. But I think just the important try. thing is just make sure to put the kits first. The kits first. Put the kits first. Nothing more than a tool for marketing to very young children. Zero value to kids. It's straight up dangerous and should be blocked by most parents. I hate this channel. Everything about it. Seriously awful. It's a giant commercial and they are always talking about freaking McDonald's. Young brains are impressionable and this is completely not what I want my child to witness as fun. Garbage. Pure garbage. Just another way to manipulate kids. Nothing is Felix. Parents. Why has haven't no you reacted to music on Twitch? It's a hecking slash. Ryan's toy review was like a trash reality TV show for small children. It seems to be addictive for kids, yet has no real substance. According to Forbes, throughout 2020, Ryan's World took home an approximate income of $29.5 million, making him the highest paid YouTuber for the year above the likes of Mr. Beast and Jeffree Star. The most significant part, which I'm sure many of you are already aware, is that Ryan is only nine years old, making him younger than the Angry Birds mobile game, the film Avatar, as well as the legal working age for a McDonald's employee. 29.5 million isn't exactly a bad wicket for anyone who's yet to go through puberty, and considering in every episode it looks like Ryan is having the time of his life, on the surface it seems as though the Ryan's World channel is the spitting image of perfection itself. However, like all things in life, the Ryan's World channel has a dark side that's rarely talked about in the media. We try not to capture any moment that Ryan's in distress. Legal battles to do with not fully disclosing paid sponsorships within videos, the exploitation of Ryan for the financial gain of his parents, and most surprisingly, the criminal history associated with Ryan's mother, Loanne Kaji, who in her younger years actually went to prison. Seven year multi-million dollar YouTube star Ryan. Okay, who cares? Guys, I hate to say this, but, guys, I don't wanna be rude or whatever, but, yeah, because it's jail order, but who, who cares? Like, uh, I mean, people do things, they go they go to jail, okay? They pay the price. Why, why do you have to make them pay the price over and over and over again? Like, I, I don't know, they pay the debt to society, I don't know. Ryan Coggy's mother has a criminal past. In June 2002, when Ryan's mum was 18 years old, she was caught shoplifting at a JC Penny located in her hometown of Houston, Texas. The security of the store discovered that she'd been trying to steal six items of clothing, totaling $93, which is equivalent to around $135 today. After oh being taken back God. to the police station, she would be fined $150 for the theft, given 40 hours of community service, as well as being put on a six month probation period. On top of this, she had to carry an offender identification card while also attending an anti-shoplifting program. However, Here's where it gets interesting. Rather than simply showing up and doing her 40 hours of community service, she sat around and did nothing. Loanne didn't report to her community supervisor, didn't pay the fees she was supposed to pay, and didn't even show up to any of the community service when scheduled. For this reason, she would be arrested again. And instead of a $150 fine and a slap on the wrist, she will be sentenced to two months in the Houston Harris County Jail. She will remain in jail for 30 days, after which she will be released and from the information available, manage to stay out of jail from that point onwards. Now, making a judgment about an individual's character based on what they did at the age of 18 is perhaps a little unfair. People change a lot in 18 years, so her going to jail could be totally discountable. But at the same time, I think it'd be unwise to pass it off altogether as, oh, she was just young young and dumb. It's not exactly like she was 13 years old stealing some food because oh she my God, to eat chat. And didn't have any money. She like, like, again, chat, guys, I like this channel a lot. I agree with him a lot of times. I think this is like, this is trying so hard to roll them. Like, dude, come on, man. She's 18 years old and going out of dude. her way to steal expensive clothing, something that's more of a luxury than a necessity. Then, as mentioned, she would go on to double down on her mistake by failing to comply with the consequences. She just ignored them, giving us an insight into her character at a younger age. Perhaps this is a far-fetched assumption, but maybe we could also say that it showed us she had an innate willingness to cut corners in order to get what she wants, which will be an important factor for later parts in the video. After this whole prison saga was over and done with, Loanne would meet her future husband, Cheyenne, with whom she would later have her first son, Ryan, in October 2011. In March 2015, at the age of only three and a half, Ryan asked his mom, how come I'm not on YouTube when all the other kids are? I was watching other people and I was like, why am I not on there? And Following this statement, Ryan's parents would create the Ryan Toys Review channel and begin making the videos with him shortly thereafter. Let's go get it then, you want it? Uh-huh. Okay, put it in the cart. In July 2015, only four months after creating the channel, they would see their first piece of viral success with their video, Giant Lady Queen, and surprise. I'm filling up gas. 
which gained 20 million views after only one month. Following this success, the channel began posting new videos daily. And while this was great for the growth of the channel, it began the discussion about whether the channel was really in the best interest of Ryan, or was it borderline abuse to have the child doing so much work with the money ultimately going to the parents. There's always been a question of ethics in any discussion relating to kids' channels on YouTube. What are the labor laws? about putting your kids in video. Why don't, why don't people just get, uh, uh, guys, I, guys, I'd have takes like this. I had to have takes like this, okay? But why don't people watch videos that are entertaining, to be entertained, consume it for what they are, and mind their own fucking business, dumb fucks. Why do people have to make conclusions that, that aren't, are not appearing, aren't there, aren't, don't hint at it. Why do people have to make a false conclusion and work backwards to conclude it? It's so dumb. Watch the fucking video, you piece of shit. What is on like people, man? What? How do you quantify the value that they're bringing to the content? Are then, there? Is that value no, going back to them? Thing. But is the criticism towards preteens making more than a million dollars a year on the YouTube platform just pure jealousy from other people who might be in their 40s making 60 grand a year? Or is there a legitimate case for concern? It's an extremely difficult topic to determine for a few main reasons. Firstly, there'd be channels where the child being the main star legitimately wants to be a part of the show, which is apparently the case with Ryan. Well, what was special is that he wanted his own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have a lot of parents who, yeah. like, come on, Push pushing on their them. kids mm -hmm. out there. However, there are other channels on which you can tell the kids clearly don't want to be involved in the videos, and the parents are forcing them to appear in order to gain ad revenue. What is this? Cody! So in order to determine whether Ryan being involved in the videos is a part of the channel's dark side, we have to first determine a few what different things. What was that? Things. Is it voluntary involvement? Is he being held at gunpoint to perform? Does he have to deal with the difficult parts of the channel like editing, criticism, and innovation? How much of the spoils and rewards actually go to Ryan in the present and future? We see comment after comment talking about how they are exploiting him, Chat. which would be awful if true. But Guys, what about all the people who do acting for, for, for stuff? What about all the actors who act at young ages? Where are all these questions and where are all these investigations about them? There are none. Why? Because most of the time, it's not a problem. It is not a problem. Simply having him appearing in the videos isn't really exploitation. We need to ask more questions. Now, the first thing we have to establish here in order to determine whether Ryan's appearance is a part of the dark side of the channel is whether or not Ryan is being forced to appear in the videos. Now, Ryan stated that the channel huh. was birthed because he personally wanted to be on YouTube there are laws. And because his parents forced exactly. him. Exactly. However, it's also important to question this statement with a healthy level of skepticism. Ryan was only three and a half when he was first put on the platform. It's hard to believe that any kid of that age would already be keen to personally appear on any kind of public platform. But I could be completely wrong with that. As shown in the same video, the number one most desired job for kids aged 8 to 12 is YouTube star, followed by teacher, professional athlete, musician, and astronaut. However, if you did a study on the most desired jobs for kids aged 0 to 4, they probably wouldn't have an understanding about the concept of working a job. For this reason, I'd make the assumption that the idea for the channel was more than likely from Ryan's mom. And the story of Ryan just seeing other kids on YouTube and wanting to be a part of it as well is an over embellished statement to go along with the channel's light-hearted branding. However, while this somewhat answers whose idea it was for the creation of the channel in the first place, it fails to answer the more important question. Is Ryan being forced to appear in the videos? In the beginning, perhaps there was a trade-off between Ryan and his mum, where if Ryan's mum got to film Ryan in the videos, Ryan would be able to get as many toys as he wanted. A deal that makes sense for both parties involved. You can clearly see in the beginning that Ryan isn't being forced to appear in the videos. Kids aren't very good at hiding their emotions, Bitch. especially three-year-old. Bitch, guys, that is that is a very mutually beneficial thing. Guys, when I was young, okay, my dad would my dad would buy me something that we would agree upon ahead of time. Okay, if he brought me to his to his to his date night because they they, they had children, right? And I acted polite, I stood up straight, and I acted nice. So I would act like the best kid out there, dude. I, I would tell the fakest story I ever did, and I'd get my toys. What about if it? If they're sad, Easy, they'll show dude. it. If they're happy, they'll show it. Why do you want this? Because I like it. Oh, does it, is it fun? Does it look fun? Uh -huh. Ryan is clearly happy to be on camera here, and I don't see anything sinister going on in the beginning, except for the fact that maybe Ryan's mum is using the toys in order to get a nice reaction out of Ryan. But as time has progressed and Ryan now has a lifetime supply of toys, using toys as a reward isn't really going to be all that interesting to him anymore. Especially considering he's getting older, which makes me think that unless there's some kind of other incentive for him, the only other way to get him to constantly appear on camera is with a bit of force. If we combine this with the fact that their channel has somewhat of a schedule and uploads almost 
almost daily, we can almost be certain that there are days where Ryan doesn't feel like making the content and would have to be somewhat forced by his parents in order to appear in the videos, which would be an element of the channel's dark side. However, yeah, I could be- Yeah, it would, it would, it would. I have played games my entire life. I'm 26, I still play games. When I get new games, I'm excited. If somebody has a gun on me, say, dude, dude, dude. You have to show that you like it. No, no, nobody does doing that. I feel like the game and video games. What, what about it? Because as previously mentioned, even a nine-year-old isn't very good at hiding their emotions. If he wasn't willing to appear in the videos, you'd be able to tell straight away. Secondly, Ryan doesn't actually have a very big role on the channel in terms of workload. He's the host and the face of the channel, but compared to the rest of the work required, those are probably the easiest jobs. A lot of these yep. comments that state that the parents are exploiting the son for views must think that this kid is working 15 hours every single day being whipped by the parents in order to get out tomorrow's video. It's but I toys totally and playing. disagree with that. He's not going to be doing any editing. He's not going to have to worry about scripting. He's not going to be dealing with sponsors. He's not going to be constantly innovating with new ideas. He's not going to be dealing with sets. All of the hard work is being done by Ryan's parents and their team. Behind the scene, it's a lot more work than somebody might think. It is very time consuming. I would do all the editing after Ryan goes to bed. So I would stay up several hours. Assuming all of the back work is done by the parents, each of these videos could probably be filmed within the space of an hour. On top of this, there are videos where Ryan literally has three lines, with the rest of the video being taken over by an adult talking in a kid's voice. Ryan's total quote unquote work week is probably like 10 hours max, which isn't exactly all that bad, especially when considering how much the channel is earning, which brings us to the question of finances. It's it's work at the same time though. So was, I, I, I want to say it's work worker. It's Revenue is being generated because these children are creating content. Where did mm -hmm. that money go? Mm -hmm. Is it parents that are keeping that or is it kids? One of the often perceived dark sides of the Ryan's World channel is that the parents are pocketing all the money. I hope when Ryan's 21, he gets to sue his parents for not sharing any money with him. Now, the level of idiocracy within this comment is immeasurable. Firstly, because I've had a good look and there's absolutely no sources pointing to how much Ryan receives for his contribution. So first things first, we don't even know how much of the revenue Ryan is receiving for his portion of the work. However, let's make some assumptions. Let's assume that maybe 5% of all profits go back to Ryan for him to use at an older age, and that's probably an extremely conservative estimate. Assuming the channel made 29 million in 2020, that's still $1.5 million for approximately 10 hours of work per week available for Ryan to use at a later date. And if that's the case, I can't really see how that's such a negative. He'll never have to work a crappy first job that he hates. He'll never have to take out a loan just to go to college. Even if only 1% of guys, the- Guys, I feel bad that people, people are looking to this a lot and bolstered their ideas onto, onto uh, probably Ryan, who probably watched a lot of comments, who had nothing to do with any of this, who probably didn't have any idea about, about big amounts or whatever the fuck, who was involved into playing, having a good time. Now they have to speed run, learn, teaching them uh, uh, financial literacy, right? And they have to upscale that at insane rates up until he's 18. It, 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 it's, it's, People aren't ready for this. This is like insane. The profit goes to Ryan. That's still $300,000 a year in his name at the age of nine. And while as long as Ryan is being paid enough to set him up for life, it's hard guys, to see- Guys, it's hard. Nobody knows what to do, chat. If you're 18 and you get dumped like 60 mils, I'm sure you guys. Guys, if people are people gonna explode, fucking die overnight. People, you know, no one's Setting gonna happen. Up for life, it's hard to see any problems there. However, a problem might raise when you examine how, it is, how man. the money is being earned. Another element that's been associated with the dark side of the channel. In September 2019, a complaint was filed to the Federal Trade Commission, claiming that the sponsor videos feel too authentic and cannot be distinguished from unsponsored content. At what? the time, it was revealed that around 90% of Ryan's World's videos contained sponsored content, all of which being targeted to preschools who were too young to distinguish distinguish between a sponsored video and a review. Ryan's parents responded by saying that the well-being of our viewers is always a top priority for us. We strictly follow all platforms, terms of service, and all existing laws and regulations, including advertising disclosure statements. And I guess this one as a whole is just another question of ethics. To what extent should they reveal to their audience that what they're watching is sponsored? Will it even make a difference considering it's stated Nobody that kids cares. younger than the age of eight or nine cannot put recognize a title. advertising within media? Many reviews of the Ryan's World channel state that the content targets your toddlers like cigarette companies. Should advertising be disallowed within the videos altogether? What incentive would Ryan's World have to continue making it matters legally. completely removed sponsors? A natural element of the channel's dark guys, side is that- it matters legally. And if they fail to do this chat, that is, that is really bad. And they should fail, take all the fines and possible, you know, they should get all the consequences. But uh, I, they, if they, they, they were scared to put ad or whatever the fuck and do it, that's their fault. They're fucking stupid as shit for that. Okay, but I don't think people who consume their videos gave a shit. 
What if it's hashtag Aduna? They really put the content in the toys. They don't care. Should advertising be disallowed within the videos altogether? What incentive would Ryan's World have to continue making content if they completely removed sponsors? A natural element of the channel's dark side is that in order for the creation of the content to be worth it, they kind of have to advertise to kids. And if parents want to distract their kids with YouTube content, they have to bear the brunt of having their kids advertised to. The ad rev is probably juicing their ass crack wide open. Why is it such a big deal about the ad shit? All in all, I think this might be one where you guys have to draw your own conclusion as to the shade of black that permeates the dark side of the Ryan's World channel. Is Ryan being exploited for the financial gain of his parents? Or is it reasonable as long as he's receiving a cut of the pie? Is it ethical to continue sponsorships to an audience too young to understand that they're being advertised to? That Does is the, the criminal history of Luan Kaji- That is up for the government to tell. That is, is up for the government to tell. It, it is their regulation and their take on social media and, in, and, and, and its influence. Is, that's how it is. To understand that they're being advertised to? Does the criminal history of Luan Kaji make an impact on how the channel is run today? It'd be safe to say that their practices aren't perfect. But hey, for the many parents out there that appreciate his ability to stop their child from crying, Ryan's world has its place on the platform, perfect practices or not. So, I'm gonna be honest, I had this video, but I actually didn't enjoy this video very much. The reason why that is, is very simple. I thought this video lacked actual evidence of problems and it literally lacked substance of why. Most concerns are fucking made up from internet psychos trying to bolster their, their what they would do and project what they would do for their child when was making videos. Like absolute degenerates.